April 3rd, 2022. One year ago today, I said goodbye. I didn't know at the time what year I was about to have. I didn't realize I wasn't just saying goodbye to my first love, my childhood best friend, my first boyfriend, my first lover, and a failed marriage. But I was also saying goodbye to my old self. I was saying goodbye to everything I thought I knew, who I thought I was, and the pressure to be someone I wasn't. Today, I was just laying in bed and I turned on Disney Plus. I saw that there was a Olivia Rodrigo movie, so I started watching it, and all it reminded me of was was a year ago today. This album came out around the time that me and my ex-husband decided to separate. We were married for a year, we were childhood best friends, and this was a really hard time for me. And I wanted to sit down today and talk about what this past year has looked like for me and the things that I really never said on YouTube. I'm gonna be talking about some things that are gonna involve other people and I don't want any hate on anyone. And I'll talk about how I've forgiven everyone towards the end of this, but I just wanna be real with you and show you what this past year really was like for me. A year ago today, I shut my apartment door in Utah on my husband and posted the announcement video that we were getting a divorce. I wish I could describe how I really felt that day, but I don't think there will ever be words. I knew this day was coming for months before this, but was it really happening? Was I really part of that statistic of getting married young and then getting divorced so soon? I promised myself I wouldn't be a part of this. I said divorce was never an option. I let myself down. I shut the door and cried for hours that day. The amount of pain and abandonment I felt was indescribable. I felt relieved to get out of this relationship that was sucking the life out of me, but also unbelievably devastated to let go of it, to hurt my best friend, to let myself down. Following weeks were the worst weeks of my life, filled with moments of hope. I must add that I hadn't just told everyone I knew that I was 20 and getting a divorce, but I'd also just stated about my removal from the church that I grew up in, that most of my family is still in and loves deeply. Two things now ripped out of my heart, my love and my religion. I get why the rumors of me being mentally insane started. I get why my own blood chose a different side. I get why no one reached out. I was doing everything I wasn't supposed to do. I was hurting a lot of people, but it's crazy how no one seemed to see how torn I was. I cried my myself to sleep for weeks. I actually got drunk by myself on a random Tuesday night just trying to numb on the pain that I felt and I wasn't even 21. I just needed someone to ask for my side of the story and to really hear me out. I literally never asked anyone to take a side, not even those of you online. I had my own opinions of course, but I wish no harm on my ex, but for some reason that kind of felt one-sided. I felt like there was this narrative being portrayed of me and I had no way of stopping it. I understood where people were coming from, but no one tried to understand where I was coming from. No one tried to understand that I thought about taking my life all the time over that past year. And not to say that it was my ex's fault or the marriage or anything, but no one cared that I was miserable. I was just someone to blame. When I had to have some phone calls with people in my life to sort out some details, I would hang up even more drained than I thought possible. Every person I called dragged me into a different direction of what they wanted for me. Just move back home. Just go back to church. You need to try to fix your marriage. Oh, you should start dating right away to help you move on. No, you need to take some time off to mourn. Try getting some exercise. I'd even been told you should just be more of a submissive wife or that and I quote, I must have demons living inside of me. Some of those suggestions weren't bad. Some of them were horrible, <laughs> but it wasn't suggestions or advice that I needed. I needed someone to show me what it truly felt like to be loved. Love so hard, I knew there was nothing that could tear us apart. I wanted someone to just fly out and hold me on my apartment floor as I cried and not to speak a word, but just to hold me. See, I thought I knew what unconditional love was, but turns out the one person I was meant to receive it from let me down. There was in fact conditions and when things got rough, there was no fight for us. So I carried on because what else could I do? A single woman living alone with a load of bills to pay by myself. So I did the only thing that has ever brought me comfort and made some lighthearted videos on YouTube. Although most people were kind, it's funny how often I would get comments like, you realize this isn't just a breakup, it's a divorce, right? And that really amused me because if only they knew what it really felt like. But hey, if that makes them feel better, who am I to stop them? Some time went on and I packed up my apartment to leave for good. I actually slept on the empty floor with my cats that I was about to give back to my ex, which is one pillow and one blanket. That night, I cried until I fell asleep. 
When we packed all the boxes in the car and cleaned the apartment perfectly so I could get that deposit back, I sat in what used to be my studio and fell on the floor crying so hard. My mom walked in and just sat there and hugged me and told me she knows exactly how I feel. That is what I needed the whole time. She just held me and let me feel out those awful feelings. So that was me a year ago. Now, I don't need to get into too many details of the healing process, but I do relate to Olivia Rodrigo's song when she says one step forward, three steps back. I'd feel like I'd be moving on a little, then my ex would post a video of clips of me talking about us getting married without my permission and then nailing things to a wall. And while he got tons of comments, even from my own family, about how much they love him and, oh, Sydney must be in the wrong based on this, I was alone. While he had his whole family surrounding him and apparently my family and he had friends, I was literally alone in my apartment in Utah. Or when I found out about the rumors that I just must have borderline personality disorder or at least be bipolar that I must have cheated or just done awful things and been an awful wife. Wow, that was definitely rough. There I was thousands of miles away with no one asking for the truth. Or when I first saw a picture of him with a new girl. I could have sworn I was over him by now. I was actually visiting Utah at the time and I barely could get out of bed, laying on the guest bed at my cousin's house, just crying. I ended up muting almost everyone I knew on Instagram because it was almost daily that I saw a photo shoot or a party or something of them as a couple doing exactly what I had been doing a year before, literally replacing me. Talk about deja vu. Then it was time for me to go home for Christmas. I literally booked a three-day trip because of how bad my anxiety was. But turns out this was exactly what I needed. I was able to explain my side of things, show how I'd been working on myself, show how the new Sydney is, and surprisingly, I didn't feel anxious or any weird feelings when I was home. I even drove past that old house that we'd moved into when we got married, and I felt content. This whole past year, I always tried to take the upper road because of course there's always gonna be rumors and people are going to be hurt, but I kept my hurt to myself. I kept it to me and my close friends and you know, the new friends I met out here in Texas and with my mom and it worked. I let out the feelings where I needed to and I didn't spread any rumors. I kept it to myself and it was really hard. I even feel a little uneasy about posting this, but I feel like I just want you guys to know kind of where I'm coming from and what I really went through. So now here I am one year later, and I think I'm doing pretty good. I wish no harm. I really do want my ex to be happy. I have no bad blood with anyone, even my ex, who had hurt me throughout those hard times. I've actually forgiven my ex, forgiven anyone who hurt me, and most importantly, I forgave myself. I forgave myself for some things that I did in the marriage that probably weren't the best, and I forgave myself for allowing myself to get into that position. I don't know if I'm completely healed, but I can tell you that I'm doing really good. One thing I hadn't mentioned yet, and to wrap up this video, is that within that first week, I went to a Christian church for the first time, and it was Easter. After I went there, I was like, wow, I need this. And I chased God with everything I had because I knew I wouldn't make it without him. I had no idea what this was going to look like. I hated religion. I was so mad about finding out the truth about the Mormon church and didn't know where to even turn to find God. But in the midst of my living hell, I found Jesus. He healed me. He walked through this with me. He forgave me. He taught me how to forgive. He kept me out of the drama. He let me rant to him so that I wouldn't have to go rant to someone that would cause more drama. He kept me from saying stupid things that I shouldn't have said. He picked me up off the ground and gave me a much better life to live. While this past year was incredibly challenging, it was also incredibly freeing. I am now the person I've always wanted to become. I am now the woman that God wanted me to be. I'm no longer living for anyone else but myself and God. A year ago today, God closed a door in my life and I'm only alive because of where God has led me. That person I was looking to, to love me unconditionally, that's Jesus. And he'll forever be the only one that can fully fulfill me. So a year ago today, I announced my divorce as a 20 year old woman and here I am and I'm pretty content. I'm actually pretty happy. I'm doing really good. <laughs> And although I talked about some things in this video I never thought I would tell the internet that maybe exposes things a little too much, I wish no harm on anyone. Don't go after anyone. This is just between me and you besties, okay? This is just to let you in a little bit to see where I've come from and how I've learned and forgave even though things really hurt. I, you know, I went to therapy for a while and healed from a lot of like my childhood trauma that I never talk about on here that y'all do not need to know about. And of course, he 
healed from that marriage and some things that went on in that that I will never speak of on here. And I got with God and that changed it all. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to see more content like this, just let me know. And here's to another amazing year.